Welcome home, Rep Pack. Marcus here, and welcome to Comfort Cartoons, the show where I collect absolutely everything from the late 90s, 2000s, all the way to the modern day. And I'm also trying to create the world's biggest SpongeBob. You can see him on the curb down there. He's, he's waiting for the buzz. There it is. And Nickelodeon collection. But not just that, the creator, CEO, and founder of this channel has a storage space available uh, for rent if you guys are interested. But I hope you beautiful people are having an amazing day. And if you guys aren't, you know the drill. Nostalgia Storage Wars camera flip. It's about to get a whole lot brighter, Rep Pack, because your boy is here. And today is the day where we have gone to pick up one of our storage boxes. So for those of you guys who don't know, we do a stream every single Friday on an app called Whatnot. And of course, you guys have heard me talk about it at the end of every single video, but I end up picking up a lot of the inventory that we get for those streams from different connections that I've been fortunate enough to make through doing these videos. And one of them I met while I was doing the flea market videos with my mom is a guy who actually goes and picks up storage units and cleans them out. Pretty much every other day he's getting new ones in, he's getting old stuff in. He deals a lot of furniture and a lot of antiques and all of the toys, nostalgia goods, uh, animated related things. I just tell him to make a box for me and we're able to work out a deal on it because a lot of that stuff he doesn't have the clientele to really sell anyway. So he's able to make a little bit of extra on it and then we end up getting a good deal. So I picked up a box right back here and in that box we loaded up all the stuff that he left for us and it was looking pretty good. It's, it's pretty full. <laughs> it's a pretty full box. He said that I can have everything for 175, but this is our second or third episode of this series. And every single time we've almost doubled the value of what he charged me for everything in the box. So I just told him like, hey, just take 200. I'll give you 200. He gave me an amazing deal on the last box. So I paid 200 for everything in that box right there. We're going to be heading back to the cavern to check it all out and see if we got at least $200 in value and also what surprises and uh, goodies we might have inside of the box. All right, so we are back in the cavern. Tavern. $200 the price to beat. So it's on screen for you guys. I am extremely pumped. I always have so much fun getting into these. And of course, some of this stuff I'm going to add to my collection. And whatever we don't end up keeping, we might either give it away or it'll be available on our whatnot shows. So let's go ahead and take a look here and let's dive into this box of nostalgia. We always have a huge variety in these. Whereas a lot of the stuff that we collect is usually more spongy, more Nickelodeon, you know, anything animated related. This is just what this person thought might be considered nostalgic. So <laughs> let's go ahead and give them a little. So you guys got a little sneak peek there. Let's go ahead and sit it on down and see if we can beat this $200 price tag in total. All right, so getting started off with some bangers already. We have some VHSs. So that's already screams Dang. freaking nostalgia. We have two Halloween ones. So we have the SpongeBob Halloween and we also have the Rugrats Halloween. And I do believe we have the SpongeBob Halloween one in the collection. So I'll be checking it out. Of course, we're always doing everything in this collection for the archival purposes. So whatever one is the best condition will stay here in the cavern and whichever one is not will end up working its way out of here. So if I have one that's in better shape than this one, that's what I'm going to keep and this one's going to be going out there so we can get something else new in the collection. We have these Rugrats Halloween and I don't know if we have this one, but I feel like we do. I maybe have it on DVD. I love it though with the old spooky house in the back. You got Kimmy there. You got Shaggy or Shaggy. <laughs> so I was thinking Scooby-Doo. We got Chucky here dressed as a werewolf and I don't know how I feel about Tommy being dressed as a vampire holding a, a bag of candy that is like covered in, in blood. That is pretty dark, Tommy. <laughs> I like even with like this, like, I don't know if it's like a, a buzz cut or like a thing over his head, but even his hair sticks out through it. <laughs> it's <laughs> like just this lump. That's my hair in 2020. <laughs> like literally that was the haircut I had. Ah, uh, the, the curses of being born with a widow's peak. It's not as bad now, but when I had a kid, man, it was straight for an Eddie monster. Just <laughs> down <laughs> to my forehead. But with age, it became less widowy. <laughs> All right, so we have that one right there, though. Again, I don't necessarily know how valuable these ones are. SpongeBob VHS can be pretty pricey. Rugrats ones were super, super common back then, so not super valuable. But let's see if there's any more media in here. Bro, no. Whoa. <laughs> we'll look at that in a second. We got Pokemon, gotta catch them all. Zap theme deck. Oh my gosh, my mind is racing right now with thoughts of what could be in here. Uh, immediately I'm thinking like, is it sealed on the inside? Cause you know Pokemon could be. Stupid price. Yeah. <laughs> I have no clue. I mean, does it have everything in there or is it just a box? So it feels like there's stuff in there. That is gonna be exciting, but let's go ahead and uh, get the media out. All right, so we have a couple more pieces here. We have. 
the Pocahontas, Color of the Wind, which is an amazing, amazing song. Probably one of the best Disney original songs out there. And this is the sing-along VHS. I had a couple of these as a kid, but basically what they were were the songs of the movie kind of cut. Well, actually, this one's got a couple. It's got Pinocchio's Just Around the River Bend, and it's got Cinderella's Work Song, uh, yeah. Oliver and Company, Why I Worry. It's got Phil Collins on there. Oh. No <laughs> Phil Collins on here. <laughs> so they have a few different Disney songs incorporated into one VHS, but of course, the main one, the finale of this one being Colors of the Wind. So you have the sing-along there, and then we also have a sealed copy of the Rugrats movie here. So this is the full-length hit movie. <laughs> was it random cat dog? <laughs> yeah, it was the cat dog bonus short, but I love it was this full-length hit movie. Like, oh, don't don't worry, this isn't uh, part one of the movie. This is a full-length. And it's a hit. It's a hit. This has got to be one of the earlier releases of it, though, just because nowadays they do not release this on, like, DVD like this. Usually it's, like, with the conjunction of many other DVDs. And what's interesting to me is that the movie, of course, made by Paramount, but it was actually released by uh, Warner Home Video. So, I mean, just, just a weird little uh, little note there. But awesome little set of media right here. We'll check all of this out, and I think we gotta get into this. Uh, I'm gonna go get some sleeves just in case we need them. You never know. You never know. You never know. Unless you have watched this video already and this is your second time watching it, thank you and welcome back. And you know, just try to act like you don't know, because I don't know at this moment, but I will. But I hope it was good. Okay, so the most valuable one here is, no surprise, the SpongeBob one that's about like eight bucks. This one's around the same, but even sealed. This is a sealed one and it's still like not crazy. And then this one right here is like five, six bucks, which is honestly more than I expected. And this one being the cheapest because it is a DVD that is very, very, very mass produced. It goes for about a couple bucks. It rounded out to $28, but we're gonna go and drop it down because that's based off of like their going rates, but not including condition, all that stuff. And we just wanna make sure we clear the number as safely as possible. So we're gonna go ahead and take like 30% off. We're gonna go ahead and take that 28 and bring it on to 20. So we're at $20 right now, minus from our 200. We got 180 to go for this to be worth it. I mean, that all could change right here with this. I'm, uh, I'm interested, yeah. Why does it have this bag that says 22 on it? I, and the people that I got this from, I, I know didn't, but this, this is just how they had it. I have no clue why it says 22 on there, but let's go ahead and check it out. So the box is okay shape. Um, I grew up with a bunch of these as a kid. I don't think I ever had the Zap one. I have this one in my collection now like in my pokemon collection you know sealed probably though. yeah sealed but i never had it as a kid so let's go ahead and take a look here i am so interested like there's just like so many possibilities that could be in store here it also could be nothing so let's keep that in mind too so there's a like a stack of cards it looks like it's not complete it doesn't look like it has all of the like innards that come in it so these look like they might just be cards that were stored in here but they could still be crazy cards hey but they're still og ones though so this is is Pikachu. So this is a common Pikachu card, which that in itself, if it's in great shape, which it's basically mint, can be like a couple bucks, but it's not shadowless, it's not red cheeks. There is variations you can get of this Zap themed Xbox where every single card in it is shadowless. That's crazy. And they're like a thousand dollars sealed if you could find them because they're super uncommon, but that's not it. <laughs> but still, we have a Pikachu there. We have this tops like Charmander card here that looks like it's from the Mewtwo set where like you can build a picture. There's such a random card. You have Tops again, Dragonair. <laughs> we have the Pokemon <laughs> card game of the Joker with the Poliwhirl. <laughs> We have a Fighting Energy. We have, again, from Mewtwo Strikes Back, the, like, Good movie tempest. card. Ooh, that's Ooh. a cute Charmander there. Another Mewtwo Strikes Back, Mewtwo Strikes Back. Okay. Pikachu, another Pikachu. Magnemite, Magnemite, Magnemite. Yeah, so, makes sense for the Zap. Yeah, so I think some of it is the themed card from the deck, but some of it's just random. Gust of Wind, I think that's also in the Zap theme deck. These are all themed deck cards at this point. Mr. Fuji, I see you acting like a loving uh, parent to Pokemon here when you created a monster and gambler <laughs> hey what we were doing here is kind of in a sense gambling yeah <laughs> but don't think about it like that okay we have another stack of cards here like, oh ooh, okay let's see what we got here so we have one of these which i forget what these are these are lenticular cards i used to have a few of those yeah <laughs> we have bell sprout all the way to weeping bell or is that a uh... yeah weeping bell Victory Bell's name was so long they had to get rid of the extra L because they couldn't fit it in the original game. That's funny. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's how long his name was. We have Cloyster. Zapdos is non hollow, but hey, that's a mean card. These are fossil, aren't they? Yeah, some of these are fossil. And you know what I've been thinking about doing is I remember seeing it on Facebook years ago. Somebody who made an entire, like, uh, framed photo of all the original 151 Pokemon in their original cards. And I have enough unlimited cards where I think we may be able to do that one day. That would so be sick. I think I want to do that is make the 151 into some artwork to where it has all of their original cards on it. I have a lot of the uh, base set cards, like, graded and stuff like that. But just one that has all their raw cards. So at any time, I can just, like, look at all their artwork. So I might save some of these for that project. We have a Graveler right Ooh. there. It's so crazy how just images can be so nostalgic. Kabuto, Magmar there. Yeah, booty. it looks okay. Yeah, Booty Cheek's head doesn't look as booty -y. Charmeleon, Ivysaur. Okay, Caterpie. Let's go a little faster here. We got Farfetch, Grimer, uh, Zubat, Golbat, oh, Bulbasaur, OG Bulbasaur there, Weezing. I have no clue where these cards must have come from. Like, are they all in Zap? Maybe. Tentacruel, Shelder, Psyduck. There's nothing, like, unbelievable in here yet, though, that's gonna, like, really give us our value. So, I mean, unless the box is probably... Even the box could probably be worth something, so we'll see. This is all energies. Ooh! Oh, okay. okay! Okay, There we go. We got the Hypno Holographic right there. Might be a couple bucks. Yeah, how's the condition on it? I mean, it's oh, pretty good. Pretty so we can sleeve that guy up. And then we have Mewtwo making all these clone Pokemon on fly and he just dips off into this nowhere. Then we have Pikachu's vacation, Charmander, tail end of the race, and another Pikachu. So let us uh, break this stuff down here, see if the box itself is worth anything. But I would assume most of the common cards, like these unlimited ones are like a dollar or two. Maybe like the Pikachu's, Bulbasaur's could be a couple bucks, but let's see what we can find out here and we'll add this into there appropriately. But that was still really cool. All right, so like I said about my goal to get all 151 and unlimited form and like clean, you know, uh, semi-mint shape. We got 27 right there. That means we only got 124 more to go, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we also have the Hypno right here. And like I said, I have some already. I have to like just see how many I have in total. But we have Hypno and that's technically 28. And the Hypno goes for about 15 bucks in a little bit worse condition than this. So 15 bucks. And then the box itself goes for about 10 to 20. But because of the fact that there's a bunch of cards in there, so that would be $15 right there. There's many of the cards that Pikachu's go for about $5 each, but it's a lot of work to get rid of all those different cards, but they're all a couple bucks each. We're just going to throw another five on there, making it $30 as a whole package. But in reality, it's probably a lot more than that, but it would definitely be very time consuming. So we'll just say 30 bucks as a whole. All right, so we have this Rudolph the Red-Nosed <laughs> Reindeer. Yeah. I don't necessarily know if I really wanted this that much, but it's kind of cool. Does it act like noise or something? I think the nose lights up. That's what I was thinking, but I don't see anything on his paws. Just squish his whole body until something happens. Oh, there Hey, we there we go. He's playing some kind of song. Uh, what is this song? Totally not copyrighted or anything. You don't know the song? I don't know the song, but it seems like it could be some kind of Christmas like classic. It's almost like it could be called Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. No, that's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> but we have Rudolph there. He's got a light up red nose. Let's just get a couple items out and we'll check them all out at the end. Next up here, we have a Scooby-Doo statue. But what is it? It looks like maybe like a paperweight? Yeah, I guess so, huh? Or maybe a, you know what I think it is? Let me see. We got our Patrick pin. Is it a pin holder? Yeah! It's a Scooby-Doo pin holder. That is actually really cute. But from the back here, I can see a big glue job. It looks like it got broken at some point. Oh. So that definitely takes some points down on it a little bit. But it's from the Warner Brothers store, Cartoon Network, 1998. I mean, hey man, he, he's been around for a while. Everybody breaks a couple things here and there on that journey. Except for maybe you. Like, I've never broken, well, I, that's not true. I fractured a bone in my foot doing a video before. Um, but besides that, I've never broken a bone. That was a fracture. A fracture isn't a break. Otherwise, they would call <laughs> it a broken foot. I fractured my foot. But other than that, have you ever broken a bone in your life? No, nope, I have you not. You want to? I do not. <laughs> I would like to refrain from that still. <laughs> so if you've ever broken a bone in your life, let us know in the comments down below. It's mind blowing to me how many people have just lived and never broken anything. There's so many people that have never been broken a bone, never been stung by a bee, and everything else people have happened, it had happened before. But <laughs> if you've never broken a bone, let us know in the comments. And if you have, let us know. I'm interested to see if the bone breakers or the not bone breakers outweigh each other. Who's the, who's the dominant force? Okay, we have a Mickey Mouse uh, popcorn bucket here. So this is like a vampire Mickey. We had Vampire Tommy. Now we got Vampire Mickey here. Really cool. Is it, is it clean on the inside? That's the question. Whoa! He just peeled back his whole face. <laughs> Literally just his face. 
<laughs> look okay in there? Yeah, I mean, it looks pretty pretty clean. Some of these popcorn buckets can be kind of rare, so I mean, you never know. Um, Disney Parks has got the original lanyard to go with it, too. That's a pretty sweet item. I love the vibe of it, for sure. Not terrible condition. Ooh, that's a little something more my style. We have the Rugrats movie keychain there with Tommy. That is so adorable. It's actually a really good Tommy sculpt. <laughs> what does it say? Really works? Really works Tommy. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> you know, he's not one of those people you hire and they just don't really work. They just just gonna hang out talking. He really works. <laughs> That's a great resume, Tommy. Removable bottle that really squirts. Oh. Huh? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I think I could live without that, but I can't see how those the squirter. The bottle has a little tiny uh, nipple hole there. You see that nipple hole? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, and it's got a little bottle there, so I guess it really works. Fill up bottle with water and squeeze movable arms, legs, and squeeze movable arms, legs, and head. Can you imagine your stretch? Just look at somebody's keychain. They just squirt you with some kind of uh, unknown substance. <laughs> we would have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would have a problem with just a pin what's in there. If it's Coke Zero, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm opening it up. <laughs> uh, don't think about that too much. But they have some other ones too here. I think I might have uh, this one, and I may have this one somewhere in the collection already too. But I do not have these guys right here. Okay. That is sweet though. I, I'm, I'm hyped on that guy. That's new to the collection. All right, should we get a couple more out of here? Let's do it. Oh, the King Neptune. Her eyes. What the heck? We have a very dirty Angelica Christmas ornament. It looks like she's clean on the inside there, but this box is filthy. But my goodness, does she look demented? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't know if she should be the naughty list, the nice list, or if she's on the Grim Reapers list. <laughs> she looks dead-eyed, man. But she also just kind of looks derpy with her mouth, like... <laughs> I mean, it's very cute. Can you make out what her letter says? It looks like it says, Dear Santa. Dear Santa. And then it's got Doug notebook There's, writing. That one says men. That's men? A, I like it as men. Dear Santa, men. Yeah. I think it's just squiggles. No, yeah, it's definitely squiggles, but it somehow spelled men. <laughs> Very, uh, I don't want, I don't, I'm not gonna be honest, that's not very cute, but very nostalgic and definitely old, 1998, so that would be interesting to check out. You know, she's just asking for like Cynthia or like cookies. Oh yeah, yeah. Cynthia Dreamhouse of some kind, yeah. for sure. <laughs> or on a bad year, a brand new mom and dad, you know, yeah. Angelica could be pretty savage. Oh dude, you're gonna love this. The DS. <laughs> we have a little Nintendo DS here. I mean, not in the worst shape, I and mean, these things were like fingerprint and scratch magnet. And it actually has a game in there. Try to guess what game. I'm gonna guess um, Sweet Life and Zack and Cody on the Diaz. I, I, I doubt someone had that. I'm gonna go with Sonic. <laughs> Sonic? Yeah. A Super Mario. <laughs> new, new Super Mario Bros. Ah, oh, that game was so good too. That's a good one. Because you could connect with somebody else and actually play even if they didn't have the game. And as somebody who usually didn't have the game, that was nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's missing the little bottom port here too. You think it has any juice in it? Hmm. No. Oh. Hey, it actually does. The oh. batteries in this are remarkably good. Actually, surprisingly good. The screen is... The screen has some damage on it, but that's still pretty cool. The DS game doesn't read either. Oh, there it goes. So you actually have Mario Bros in there now. Just the touch screen's a little... I think even like in bad condition, they can probably get like, you know, probably 20 bucks at least. Why does it feel like the screen is so dim? Was it always this dim and we just never noticed it? I don't remember. Maybe you can turn it up. Okay, yeah, there you go. All right, so the brightness is up a bit better now. Let's see here what they got. World 8, they were kind of far. Let's see if I still got them handles. Oh man, this is- That is a throwback. <laughs> Does he still do that thing, oh, where he can like jump off the wall? Oh, no. <laughs> I remember in this game, I used to always jump off the walls and it would like save me so much. All right, come on, let's go. Ah, damn. Let's try and jump on the wall again. Oh yeah, okay, we're doing okay so far. All right, all right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, I freaking got so distracted on this thing. Your bullet Bill said no. <laughs> Damn you, Bullet Bullet Billy. Oh, whoa, I jumped off the wall. I told you to jump off the walls. No! He said, yeah. Straight to death. <laughs> it's not easy playing like this, okay? <laughs> oh, man, this is going to become a let's play, dude. I actually want to play this game. The screen's not damaged so much to where you can't play it. But I actually have another DS, so I don't really need to do that. But <laughs> that's pretty sick. How does that have that much battery like? Them things are so good at holding it. <laughs> All right, so that's pretty cool. I mean, the game might be worth a little something. And the DS itself probably have to sell as is because it does have a damaged screen, but I wouldn't imagine it's still like anything less than like 20 bucks. Ooh, why watch Shrek 1? 
Why watch Shrek 2 when you can watch the whole story? The oh, Shrek, four? all four of them in mini boxes each. And then look at them in the backside. That's actually kind of sick. Right? The box is quite beautiful. All four movies, including That's... a new holiday DVD. And hey, something you didn't know you wanted, but there it is. Yeah, I, I, except for now, I think they're making a Shrek 5. Oh, no. So, so now this is not the whole story. <laughs> this is just part of the story. Remastered editions as well, too, for Shrek 1, 2, and 3. That's pretty nice. Let's go ahead and take a look. I think we have enough stuff out where I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, even though I see something that is really cool. Let's go ahead and check out this stuff first. Okay, so we actually got pretty lucky on some of this stuff. This guy right here goes for about 40 bucks. Again, we're going to round this number down at the end, but we're about 40 with him. This DS goes for about 20. Almost more than the DS itself is the game. The game goes for $20. I mean, I, Nintendo games are just crazy pricey. They can just go ridiculously high for no reason. I just recently wanted to buy Pokemon Gal of Darkness just to play it because I was like super nostalgic for the game and I was like oh I wonder how much Gal of Darkness is on the GameCube used it's like $180 what uh, there's other things I'm nostalgic for <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if I'll replay that but they can get really pricey so $20 isn't that, that shocking to me but 25 bucks for the DS2 surprisingly Rudolph he's pretty nice he only goes for like five to ten dollars though this guy we couldn't find one sold but about ten dollars this one new sold for 25 but again We'll round that number down because the box is pretty beat up on this one. And then another shocker, this one only goes for $10. The Shrek, the whole story, man. That's a little cheaper than a movie ticket to see one of them. That's like $250 a, a DVD. <laughs> that's a crazy good deal. Oh, and then Scooby, people are asking like $60, $80, $100 for him. But this one's broken and we couldn't find one sold. So we're just going to say $15 for him. So we're at 192, a little higher, a little lower, somewhere in that ballpark. But what we're gonna do is let's just bring us down to 175. Just take a little bit off the top of everything. So that way we can, again, assuredly blow past this number. So we're at 175, we only have $25 left to go, dude. And there's still so much, so much in the box. <laughs> I think we should for sure be able to beat that 200. All right, keeping it moving here, I found two books in here that I think are so Dang. cool. And these will be going in the collection for sure. That's a big Boy. <laughs> yeah, so you know the journals from Gravity Falls? Yeah. At the end of the series, Mabel's like dipper sad because he has to leave the journal behind, or I believe he has to leave it with Stan, right? Well, I don't want to spoil the show, but Stan and his brother. Yeah. You know, so I think he has to leave the journal. So Mabel makes him a journal that is all their adventures that they had inside of Gravity Falls, and it's Dipper and Mabel's guide to mystery and nonstop fun there. So this is actually got a little drawing in there, but other than that, the book seems to be pretty clean. And that was it's just pencils we might even just be able to raise that but the book is in pretty good shape and this will be going in my personal collection Seuss. it's just so cool to get to see her like little editorials of what would typically be the journal oh my gosh of course you're a waddles <laughs> <laughs> all the way down <laughs> that probably took some work so this is a really cool book but this one is really cool because do you know what this is man i mean i know it's from star but i don't i've never watched it yes this is the magic book of spells so it's cool that they got i never even saw this book get released we saw the other one at Target several times, and this is the book of the spells, and man, the illustrations are beautiful. I feel like I need to watch this show. It's really, it's not, don't expect it to beat Gravity Falls as far as like being super mysterious, but there is there is deep lore within it, and it's a really fun show to watch. But it's not like Gravity Falls, where this book would kind of give you that inclination that it's kind of similar, you know? Yeah. But the illustrations are amazing, so this is a book that kind of is a nice little uh, view. I love this little, uh, almost like, looks like a little Bill Cipher down there. <laughs> <laughs> also, the, the Legend of Zelda, what is it called? The Hyrule logo. <laughs> but it's just a really good dive into the world of Star versus the Forces of Evil. So if you guys haven't seen this book out there, I definitely recommend you go checking it out. And I will for sure be looking into it and adding this to my personal collection with the Disney stuff. Because I really love, like, you know, of course I love the Disney classics, Lion King, Cinderella. But I'm a really big fan of the Disney XD era with, like, you know, Gravity Falls and Star vs. the Forces of Evil. So uh, there's not a lot of merchandise when it comes to that stuff too. So I'm, I'm happy to have these and add them to the collection. As far as our values go, I have no clue. We'll check them out. But again, they're going to be collected here anyway. All right. Now, are you ready for a real throwback? A throwback? Do you remember those? I mean, they still have them now. Like when you go to the grocery store, they have the conveyor belt, right? Yeah. The guys scanning, trying to get everything added up there. I don't know why when I thought about that, for some reason, I mean, my brain instantly went to that movie with Dane Cook, where he's like trying to be like the fastest guy. And he's like trying to win some competition of being the fastest bagger. Yeah, that randomly came into my mind. White clip right now. 
if you've seen that movie, that might be nostalgic for you too. Anyway, <laughs> they have those little dividers. So like if you have somebody in front of you and you want to put your stuff on the conveyor belt, you got to separate it so they don't start scanning your stuff for that person. Even though it would be nice for them to pay for your stuff, you, they'll get mad. So you have to put a divider there. And back in the day, do you remember when they had ads on those dividers? <laughs> what? <laughs> I do remember that, yeah, but then, now it just says like Walmart, Target, whatever, yeah. <laughs> yeah, or it says like Visa, MasterCard, like whatever you can pay with. This is one of the old school ones, man. This is for the TV show Reba with Reba McIntyre. And it has that old school, like early 2000s, late 90s Warner Brothers logo where he was like, Michigan J. Farag was like the, the Mickey Mouse of Warner Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> that is crazy. And it has, yeah, series premieres Friday. So they would interchange these consistently. So that that way they kind of applied because you know now they have the social media where they market every show you know the actors are kind of rewarded to kind of go and start their own social medias and you know kind of post it there and then they're following bills and that brings people back to the show and it's all social media based now whereas back in the day you know you got you were hoping people might see this little thing when they were grabbing it and be like what, what, what's Reba I'll go check out good old McIntyre show you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So I don't know if this thing has any value at all, but boy is this nostalgic to see. I wish it was something that I collected more though. Like if it would have been like Looney Tunes uh, back in action or the Pokemon movie. Oh. Cause that was Warner Brothers too, like the Pokemon first film. Something like nostalgic, the SpongeBob movie, that would be incredible. But I don't really, I, I think I maybe watched like a couple episodes of Reba, but don't really remember much about it. But the idea of this is amazing, so we'll find out. Is that the one with the theme song, the I'm a survivor or whatever? I have no clue, Mitchell. I have no clue, but it's playing right now. I'm a survivor. <laughs> maybe, maybe you're right. <laughs> <laughs> what do we have here? We have a Scooby-Doo, like candy bowl maybe? And there's Whoa. some stuff inside of it too. Oh, I, I recognize the person inside the bag. <laughs> oh, it's Buena Girl! So we have a Buena Girl figure here in Sra from Mucha Lucha. We'll take a look at that too. I don't really know what she's doing in there. It looks like she's just doing some kind of like pinwheel. I don't really know what she's doing there. Wind up backflip Buena Girl. So I guess you wind her arms back up and then she does a flip of some kind. But uh, we'll keep that sealed for now. We have a Herbie fully loaded movie pen here. It says Herbie goes bananas. <laughs> Disney's 100 years again. I, there's always 100 years for them, man. Then we have another pin here, which is, what? This is from 1994, 1995, The Nanny. Huh. The Nanny, I'm assuming, is a show with Fran Drescher that was on Nick at Night, right? But wow. what situation would there be in a plane? I mean, I think, I feel like maybe the finale had something to do with a plane. Maybe I'm wrong, but I never really remember there being an episode on the plane, but I don't know why they would have made a pin for this. We'll find out. Then next up here, we have some more Herbie pins here. We have like a silver Herbie, and then we also have a white Herbie there too, like the classic painted one. And then we have another pin that's Young Actors Workshop uh, and the Beauty and the Beast. So some kind of pin that you maybe got as a, a trying out or doing something for the Beauty and the Beast play. Uh, a lot of interesting stuff there, but let's go ahead and take a look at this Scooby here, if we can get him to turn on. Oh my no. God. Whoa. <laughs> that, that was very immediate. <laughs> that genuinely made my heart stop for a moment. <laughs> so I guess what it is, that would be terrifying. It's like you put candy in there and like go ahead and grab those pins, Mitchell. Mmm, booby snow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, Aw, that's... <laughs> that is pretty sweet. I don't know why he's looking that way. <laughs> that is pretty sweet. So I guess it's a little candy bowl. It's from the year 2000. I don't know. I know that the like Halloween uh, bowls can be pretty pricey. We got that one last year that was like 200 bucks. It's actually like a full size Scooby with his hands out. This is obviously a lot smaller, but it's got technology. I love Scooby snacks and technology. So that's pretty sweet. That's just got a couple more items out, but I mean, that's already got a nice little haul of stuff there. Oh, now this, this is epic. What the heck? Whoa. This is Spooky Island Scooby-Doo. That's amazing. This is from the live action movie. Yeah. Yeah, I was just Spooky Island. That. Oh, that's going in the collection for sure. I think if I'm right, this I think it came with a DVD box set. With it came with a movie, like a towel or something, and this bobblehead. I, I could be wrong, but. I
but I'm pretty sure that's where this comes from. That is epic. So the spooky island, the hula girl, uh, Scooby. <laughs> oh man, if we ever find one of these in the wild, I'm putting it in my car. I only have one right now. So I'm gonna collect it, but if we get another one? No, that's it, it's in the car. <laughs> that would be cool. That is so awesome. Is there any more Scooby in here? I don't see any more Scooby, so let's go ahead and just take a look here before we go any further. So we checked out everything. So we are gonna keep the price where it's at. We are at 249 now. We found this guy goes, I mean, one sold for like 50, but I think reasonably, he's got a couple little chips and stuff like that. <laughs> and I'm gonna turn him off because he keeps scaring the hell out of me. I'm thinking about $20. <laughs> this guy right here is another 20 bucks right there as well too. And then the books right here, we were able to add were about five and what? Five, like literally like five and nine. And five and nine, so nothing too crazy. And then this one right here was, was like 10, 12 bucks too. So that's a pretty big jump from 175 to 149, but we put some stuff as no value. So that's why we're not gonna go down again because this guy, it's a very obscure item. Like there's nobody online that has one of these and nor is it a Reba one especially. So like we can find some vintage ones like old Coca-Cola Sprite ones, but not this like Y2K era Reba one. So we just put no value on it. And I couldn't find any of these pins. None of these pins could I even find exactly. So we put no value on them, but this one's obviously from something. These are from Herbie, but maybe not licensed. I don't know. This one is the one I'm most interested in because I did grow up watching The Nanny and that looks way too good to be like a, a, a non-licensed product, such an obscure thing. If I were to guess what I think this is, I would believe that in the episode uh, where The Nanny and also Mr. Sheffield fly to Paris, he actually tells her that he loves her, which is like a big, like ongoing thing throughout the series is them kind of like having this flirtatious relationship and then eventually them finally being together. And that was a big premiere episode or uh, even finale maybe. So I'm thinking maybe this was a pin they gave to cast and crew in celebration of them kind of making it to that point. That'd be kind of cool. That's just my guess because there's no other nanny pins. Even if you type in nanny pins, nothing comes up. So I believe this had to have been some kind of um, like worker incentive item. I could be wrong, but nonetheless, I think it's cool and it'll be going in the collection. I mean, technically it's a Nick at Night show, so I mean, it, it doesn't not belong in here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so no value on those guys. We're at $245. My favorite item so far has gotta be this Reba McIntyre divider, the Scooby here, the Star vs. Evil book, and this bobblehead, man. I've wanted this bobblehead for so long. I'm gonna go with the bobblehead for me. I think oh, yeah. Sick. And if you guys wonder why there's no sponge in here, there was a one VHS, but he did give me some SpongeBob items as well too. And I'm putting that in a separate box that we're building up because usually that's like two, three, maybe four SpongeBob items in these hauls that we get. So I'm putting those in a separate box. And when it gets like full kind of this extent, we're gonna do a SpongeBob haul, which I wouldn't be able to give you a price on it though because it's like pieces from this one. But we're just gonna kind of see what the overall value is. But most importantly, that'll be all stuff that we're adding to the collection. So that stuff will be on its own separate thing. All right, he's back again. We got Brian Griffin. Oh, it's actually Brian. <laughs> we have Brian again. I feel like we never find any Family Guy stuff, but when did we do? It's Brian. It's always Brian. <laughs> what is uh, your favorite Brian Griffin quote, Mitchell? I just like the one where he's just like mad at the mailman. He like, you know, like all dogs bark. And then he's like, <laughs> he's like, but come back next week because I get lonely. <laughs> <laughs> Roger. <laughs> There's a few good moments with Brian, but I feel like this one's way better than the one we got a couple weeks ago where he was like in the pool outfit. It didn't make a lot of sense. It's just classic Brian. Nice one. I like that when he plays uh, Never Gonna Give You Up. <laughs> oh yeah. So I mean, but this one is just clean. So let's see what we got here. So that's one item out so far. Like I said, we're getting a few items out at once. Let's see what next we got here. Next up we have Robin. <laughs> what have, a drastic difference from Brian. <laughs> <laughs> we have Robin here uh, from the Batman animated series, I believe. We had the Batman Beyond version of this before. This is the hard skull one where it's like a plastic head and then a regular body. I didn't watch a lot of the animated series for Batman, to be honest. I did watch a little bit of Batman Beyond because it was after Pokemon, but not so much of this one, but still a really cool figure. Or plush. Or both? 
Both. Oh man, you know this is going straight to my collection. We have Ooh. Rocco's Modern Life by Marvel Comics. And this is number one. Issue number one with a nice freaking That's sick. Crunch and munch. Not I was thinking of what is it called? Rice or Oh, you're talking about uh Cracker Jacks. Cracker Jacks, where I got my license from. This is the <laughs> Crunch and Munch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if I've had Crunch and Munch. But man, that is a clean cover there. The first ever comic book for Rocco's Modern Life. That is too cool. The light bulb, Nickelodeon logo there the direct edition tv's whacked out wallaby goes berserk and his own marvel mag that is cool i don't think it's probably worth much because most 90s comic books aren't but still a really clean copy there and it's like actually in pretty good condition and on top of that we also got a little something something here we got Ren and oh my Stimpy. Gosh. these are the Ren and Stimpy pixel pals which we already have in the collection you can see them right there <laughs> <laughs> there they are. So we have these ones now, which are still really cool. It looks like the batteries are dead in them because they were on like this whole time, I suppose. Oh, a little light left. It's like flashes for a brief moment. But let's go ahead and see if we can check them out a little better here. I, I'll see if we can turn the light off on this one if you'll see it. But essentially what they do is they light up. Yeah, you can see it a little bit on that one. Is Stimpy off? Uh, he's already on, yeah. Aww. So Stimpy is dead though, that's how the Ren looks. But why do I feel like mine are different than this? I don't know why, but I feel like mine had like a little plug in the back to where you could like turn them on with like a little switch. But I don't see that on these ones. Well, okay, because we had the whole spiel about like why does some have the plug and some are battery? Yes, yes, so on the bottom of this one, you do have a plug, yeah, for the Patrick one. So if you don't want to use the batteries, you could just do that, because this one is, you know, obviously very dead as well too. But I like this line. I guess they just didn't really do well, so therefore, they just kind of stopped making them, but and we only got like that uh, kind of like a Minecraft itch for pixel art. Yeah, and it just looks really cool too. Like you know, if you have a gaming section, you collect Nickelodeon yeah. video games. In my case, these look really good there. Like of course we have them over here on the arcade setup, and I think they look beautiful there because it just kind of fits in with the whole vibe of like video games, you know. So I wish they would have made more. I'm pretty sure the only Nickelodeon ones they did were Ren and Stimpy, and also SpongeBob and Patrick. They only had to do four. At least we got SpongeBob and Patrick, and Ren and Stimpy's not a bad duo either so i don't know what these are worth we will find out but yeah pretty cool random pickup and again you'll probably see these over on our whatnot streams because we already got them in the collection all right the next up we have the biggest dick of them all what? dick dastardly <laughs> what <laughs> well, there's a smaller dick in here look see smaller dick oh. so you have two dicks there you go, you have Dick Dastardly Big, Dick Dastardly Small. So for this guy right here, <laughs> really, stop laughing, okay? <laughs> it's just his name, what could I do? Richard, Mr. Richard here. This is the old school Wacky Wobbler by Funko. And also a Wacky Racer. Yep, he's a Wacky Racer, so therefore he has to be a Wacky Wobbler. So there you go, he was, I'm, I'm assuming was probably like 2012, something like that, old school Funko. But they look like they're from the 60s or like the 70s, but they're not too old actually. And then this is a Wacky Racer soda, but that wasn't the only soda in there. There was also even a better one. And it's already partially drink, drink. Oh, you said it, you had it right the first time. Drink. <laughs> <laughs> I drink it. No, they did have more sodas in there for real. They have these ones too, which is the Sanderson sisters. Ooh, oh, Muttley! Muttley, nice. So we have Muttley, we have Sarah Sanderson, we have Mary Sanderson, and Winifred Sanderson. Why is it like every trio of girls has a redhead, a blonde, and a brunette? You gotta have a little the diversity. Hex yeah, the Hex girls. You got friggin' Powerpuff girls, and now the Hocus Pocus girls. They all have that. those three. I guess it's all the hair types, right? Or colors, really. It sounds like brown, maybe, but is that brunette? Too. Yeah, that's for a minute. No black hair. I think that's all the sodas, but that is a lot of Funko sodas. I mean, I don't think any of them are chases, but we'll find out. Maybe we'll get lucky and some of these will be a chase. So we'll check out what we got here first. Let's see if they're chases though, first off, because that would make a big difference. So this is the Winifred Sanderson. Pretty common. Pretty like much. Same as, yeah, there is, it's a common. Yep, common. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure if they had a chase, they probably would have taken it out of their storage unit, but I mean, you never know. They've found some crazy stuff before. Like, they've told me some insane stuff they found that people didn't get out of their storages, so maybe, maybe we'll get a chase. That's not it, though. Let's see here. We have uh, Sarah Jessica Parker's character. And they're all the same. They're yeah, all another common. common. Come on. We got Dick Dastardly. One out of 10,000. That's regular. So. That's a regular, yeah. That's an older, probably, soda, though, where they only had 12,000 in the whole circulation. And then we have Muttley. I mean, I doubt that he's going to be the chase of any of them. He's just laughing at you. What does the chase even look like, then? Okay, well, we got all commons. That's okay, though. 
That was the more uh, more likelihood. <laughs> yeah, that's true. There's a sixth one out there that assuredly has the chase. But on that note, we got some more stuff to check out here. This box is really loaded, but let's go ahead and just take a look at what we got here so far. I don't know whether I want to keep this Brian or not, because <laughs> his fur just looks so stainable, you know? Yeah. And I've been getting a lot of white plushies. I got that boo plushie in, I got this, uh, the uh, pinky from pinky, the brain plushie, now I've got this white Brian plushie, <laughs> maybe, I don't know. But he goes for about 20 bucks. The rest of these guys, like some of these ones, because they are lower numbers, go for like anywhere between 10 and 20. And then these ones go for a set for about a little over 20. These guys are about 10 bucks a piece. As I said at the Rocco book, <laughs> like less than $5. But hey, I don't have that one, so it was new to me. And about eight to nine bucks on this guy too. But that brought us to, we finally doubled up at $400. There's still a lot left in the box here, so let's just keep it going. We are at $400. Let's go ahead and subtract 20 in case for any circumstances we went up a little high. We just went for the most recent solds on all of them, but just to guarantee ourselves a firm solid number at the end, we're subtracting 20. We are at 380 now. So again, the, the number we'll have at the end could hypothetically be higher, but we're going on the lowest bottom freaking of the barrel dollar for these prices. So we have some Pez dispensers. Oh my goodness. Pez? Dude. What the heck? That's crazy. You know what though? I'm getting like a wave of nostalgia coming through. I think I had this Pez dispenser. When I was like maybe like, I don't know, like six or seven years old, I was really into going outside and catching bugs. I know it sounds bad now. Now I'm like, oh, that's pretty messed up. But my mom got me this Easter basket. Like I said, our Easter baskets, we, talk, we just did a video recently hunting for stuff and we were talking about how Easter baskets now kind of blow chunks compared to the ones we grew up with. And my mom Mom got me an Easter basket one year that was a, a container with a lid on top that had holes in it and a magnifying glass and a light in the middle so I could look inside and see the bugs, you know? Huh. It was really sweet. And in that container, I would be able to catch bugs. Like, you know, I would like, I, one of the things I like to catch was bees and I would put the bees inside of the container and just kind of like look at them fly and just kind of like analyze how crazy they were. And like, you know, look at the stinger closer, look at their wings. Like, I was just really fixated on bugs. And then I would just usually let them go eventually and just leave the container. The bees, I, I would just leave it open and just walk away and then come <laughs> come back in like 20 30 minutes and they would all be gone because sometimes even with the opening they would take a while to leave but i remember inside of there was a bunch of other candies and this pet dispenser was in there so this flashlight was in there and it's so cool looking at it now because it has a magnifying glass on there so you can actually see the uh the bugs it has a flashlight of course and a compass which we know is that way so let's see if it's right yeah the compass actually works too We've had enough compasses in here that we know that's north. <laughs> and then it has a little Aztec piece here with the Pez candy would come out. This I might just keep for the nostalgia of it, but then we have a bunch of them here. We have this magic Pez dispenser, which is... And it looks like Mickey Mouse. Yeah, it has the Fantasia hat there, but like, okay, there's where the candy comes out. What's magic about it though? Oh. So I guess there's a drawer down here. Is there like a secret compartment here? Because it looks like you put your Pez in there and then it says, question mark so like you put it in there and then you close it maybe and then you open it again and it's gone oh that you know what it, yeah you know i was thinking that maybe it, you put it in there and it like fills up the chamber on the right you know to like go into this okay so we were gonna try to put a magic rabbit in there but the whole rabbit didn't fit so we're just gonna put his ear in there we close it Please. oh that's pretty sweet and if i open it where's my thing at where's my rabbit's ear at <laughs> Okay, well. Close it, close the lid. Maybe pull the hat. Open it, pull the hat. Oh. No! <laughs> you almost lost an ear. That is kind of cool though. I wonder if there's like kids out there that were so frustrated with that, they like lost their candy. Like, how do I get it back out? <laughs> this just traumatized my experience with Pez. So we have that, and then this is what? Like a, some kind of secret decoder? Candy pin. So it's just a pin, but I think it lights up. Oh, and it has like a little thing you can like pull out to ride on, I guess. Yeah. So this is where the food goes. And yeah, I guess there's a secret box. So you can just put secret secrets in here. Or embarrassing Christmas photos. Yeah, things of those are like. <laughs> That's kind of cool, I guess. I don't know. Pez has done so many things in their uh, existence to try to make this something. <laughs> you know, I guess you shouldn't be surprised. I I'm going to keep this one. The other ones I don't really care for that much, but I'm sure they're not worth much because Pez stuff is just 
really mass produced, but still cool. And maybe these are nostalgic for you guys in some way. If any of you guys had some of these growing up, uh, let us know. How do you get another Pez out of there? <laughs> I didn't want to, to be honest. That one's sick. Yeah. We also have this Nightmare Before Christmas Jack Skellington pin. Ooh, that's pretty sweet. You open it up and you can see some of the uh, different characters there. Lock, Shock, and Barrel, the Boogeyman, the Mayor, a few different characters in there from the uh, Nightmare Before Christmas world. And then, of course, you have the Pumpkin King himself there. We get this really old Hot Wheels Frisbee. Whoa. It's a Frisbee with a hot rod on it. Whammo. Whammo. That sounds like the 90s brand, like the, like the most 80s, 90s brand ever. I think Whammo is like we talked about who like copied the Funko. Or Funko copied the little like uh, Freddy, Freddy Funko yeah. guy. Dang, look at the way his arm bent. Oh yeah, that's how you really throw up Frisbee. He's holding it upside down. <laughs> you have to de-attach Look at him, he's flipping it around his shoulder, spinning it here. Look at his shorts too, they're, they're so comfortable and easy to wear. You can actually bend his knees. We should go back to these shorts, man. But I just don't want to see a lot of people's legs though. That's, yeah, that's, that's probably why they went on this style. Yeah, but they're, they're definitely better for you. That definitely better for you. So there we go. We have the Hot Wheel, uh, the Hot Rod Frisbee. I can't imagine that's worth too much, but we'll check it out. Okay, and then we have this, which is a Disneyland Once Upon a Time. It looks like it's maybe like a picture frame, and then you can hang like your keys or um, I don't know, like what, what else do you hang? Just put a photo of your car and then your keys to it so you know which car is yours. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine? Oh yeah, put a picture of your car, your house, things that you need keys for, and then you just hang them here and put a little arrow to what it is. <laughs> Something like that, but really cute. Um, and it's by Disney. You can see it's got the Disney logo on there. It almost looks like it's just like a, a Disney knockoff product. They're just using the light, like using the wording and the theming, but it actually is Disney. We have this Disneyland magical frame or magnet frame. I was thinking about magic since those Pezzes. We got the magnet frame here, which is pretty solid. Nice detail on there. They paid $6 for this back when they got this. There ain't no way in hell. Hell, you can go to Disneyland and get this for six dollars now. Fifteen minimum. Fifth, that is sad, but so true. This is probably a fifteen dollar magnet today. Like, how did the prices multiply so drastically? We'll never know, right? Somebody out there knows, but we don't want to hear it in the comment section, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be reminded. Yeah. And then next up here we have a Corella Deville pin here, a collectible pin from the wow. Villains line. It looks like. And this is sweet, man. Wait for it. We have the Tigger Ooh. Air Inflatable. $20 when they got it, I guess. Who knows what it goes for now? But we have an inflatable Tigger. The real question though, does it work? It is it used also? So let's take a look here. It looks like it's used, so maybe we can try it out. It looks like it was not used outdoors, though. Like the stakes are still here. Let's plug it in, because I mean, we can't price it unless it, if we can know if it works for sure. So let's take a look. Oh, I have not been inflated in a while, me old chap. <laughs> so give me, a, give me a little bit of time to tigger on up. Oh. I was going to light, and the light actually still works. Oh, there's his foot. He's going. He's inflating. The man is inflating. You know, and? You know, Bill, get used to that thing. It was quick. <laughs> But he's not staying, like maybe he just needs more time. Let him fill up. But there we go, we got Tigger, and yeah, that's a pretty solid size one. I'd say it's bigger than the Patrick, right? Or about the same. About the same. Definitely nice though. I would love to see what's in this little present you got here, Tigger. He's so cute though, I love it. And inflatables, inflatable from the year, what year is this? Probably like 2000. You know Disney don't got no date. Oh yeah, that's true. Oh, Jemmy does though. <laughs> 2005. So this thing is almost 20 years old and the light bulb and that thing is still working. So the only thing I can say is that it just keeps leaning to one direction. But like I said, maybe that's fixable or maybe it's this. All right. So I think we kind of adjusted him a little bit and this kind of works a little better. It kind of looks more like he's picking it up, you know? Yeah. That is awesome. So the Tigger inflatable uh, does work. <laughs> All right, so we got to a round number actually of 500. These guys right here go for about 15 to 20. These ones right here, they can go for like four to five dollars each, but I think you'd wait like your whole life for those to sell. So if you did all of them in a lot, I think you might be able to get like 10. This guy right here, we found similar ones that were around 10 to $20. So we have that one there. This guy went for a solid little five to, eight, five to $10. And then this one right here, turns out there's two variations of it. There is one that's a mirror, 
dirt. And that was one they sold at the Disney store. The one they sold at Disneyland, where well, we could not find, but it's actually a picture frame. And it sold for about $20. We just went ahead and put 10. And this one, the poo one sold for $100, man. Imagine paying freaking $20. Now you have 100 bucks. 10 times profit almost. 20 years. I mean, yeah, invested in inflatables, man. That's where the money's at. <laughs> Screw the stocks. Screw anything else. Just go and buy it inflatables and animatronics. But yeah, this guy goes for about, we went ahead and did half of the new price, so we did 50 on him. So there we go. We are at $500 right now. Let's go ahead and add some more items in here, and then we'll go ahead and do another like markup based off of where we finish up. I think this will be our last little uh, peek into here because the last stuff is actually pretty big. But man, this has been so much fun and such a, a variety of different styled stuff. If you guys like seeing this variety styled stuff, let me know. But if you guys don't want to see like the Hot Wheels, stuff like this, you know, we could just take that stuff out of the bin and just do the stuff that's like more like themed to what we usually do. But I think it's cool getting to see a variety of different types of nostalgia, like whether it be Rudolph, you know, freaking Hot Wheels, you know, who knows, These, this thing, you might have grown up with it, you never know what's gonna come out the box. I think that's part of the fun. But let's see what we got left in here. Oh, you know we had to get a little sponge in here though. We got a Halloween one. Oh, we got another one. That is sweet, right? We had the Spongebob's Halloween. Spongebob's day off. <laughs> Spongebob's day off and his eyes are literal like marbles that move around within the book. We do not have this book in the collection. That is sweet. So every page you go, <laughs> it's kind of terrifying, but it's awesome at the same time. You can just kind of tilt him and then he's looking at Gary, you know? There you go. Today's the day. <laughs> he has a little pineapple back there so you guys can see di <laughs> different situations where these eyes kind of apply, honestly. He's got like total Sonic Hedgehog's eyes where they're like all together but still pretty sweet. Oh, dang. There's a lot of damage on the last page. That's sad to see. So definitely got to get a replacement version of this book eventually but still still pretty cool, uh, interesting copy there. At least you know it exists and now to look for it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I'll be looking around like this up down left right side to side we'll find it <laughs> all right next up here we have is a brats uh vault and there is something, something in there there's something in here but i have no clue how to get this thing on i've had one of these in the collection before that we've come by and there is no way unless you know the code to open this thing up. I don't know, and I will probably not figure it out. So there could be, that sounds like a billion dollars to me, maybe even a billion and two, but we will never be able to find out. It's a uh, Bratz voice activated uh, banking system. So pretty cool there, you guys can see the different designs. There. It looks like there's a little bit of sun damage maybe on the front, but not too bad. Is this open? Okay, you can get to the, uh, the surface level stuff right here. You know, some quick cash, but you wanna get in that savings account. You gotta put in some digits. <laughs> you gotta put in that pin number, baby. <laughs> Your pin number that only consists of letters that, are, that also spell the word brats. <laughs> And then next up here we have, oh, so this is the green label, but for Harry Potter fans, the Bricks of Hogwarts label. Ooh. We have a giant box, which is a Hogwarts electronic 3D game. So you have Ron and Hermione right here, and then you have this board that actually stacks up to make Hogwarts. Dude, this is like such a, like a wave for me. I used to have this toy. It was like a big like ring, and uh -huh. it had like the snitch going around, and you'd like kind of like, control Harry trying to chase his huh. rings. It was super fun. <laughs> but it's probably in this style packaging when yeah, you got it. Yeah, it was super old. And it opens up. Ooh. That's cool. That is awesome. Now that's a good way to mark it, man. Why don't <laughs> they do that? Like, oh, okay, well here's the image that we want to show you. The thumbnail, if you will. And then, oh, take a little sneak inside of it. Dang. So that's awesome. <laughs> Look, Grush. Maybe get the Grush. <laughs> the Grush, a Grush Great Halls. Or, you know, Gryffindor, Ravenclaw. Sort of I know, thing. Mitchell, but I like saying Grush. What about clump, clump, clump? <laughs> so, yeah, it has like little sound effects when you get to the different areas. It looks like a lot of fun. But this game is from the original line of Harry Potter products that came out. Although the box looks like it has some water damage, it is surprisingly still sealed. So, it's a sealed brand new game from this time period. Wow. From the year 2001. It's crazy to think Harry Potter is that old. Yep. Oh, dude, there's the freaking the Cyclops that breaks into the school. Oh, yeah. Oh, that is such a scary scene in the first ones. This is definitely themed after the uh, the first film. So, really cool one right there. This is by Mattel. That one, I have no clue. Oh, my gosh. At some point, somebody paid $80 for it. I don't know if it's that much anymore, but we'll I find out. I doubt it. I doubt that it's worth 80 bucks oh, now. Oh, look, there he is, Freddy. <laughs> yeah, Mattel. But who knows? Let's go ahead and put it to the side here. We have a few more. Oh, this is sick. Do you know 
The Muffin Man. Oh. <laughs> the man who swims in cash before Mr. Krabs even. Scrooge. Good old Scrooge McDuck. We have his money bin. Whoa. This is the Scrooge McDuck DuckTales. Like I said, I really love the Disney XD era of like shows and DuckTales is definitely a part of that. They remade DuckTales in like the mid, the early tens and it actually is a playset of the money bank. <laughs> no joke, just like Mr. Krabs. You gotta find his number one dime. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is number one dime. Right there. He's not just did he die. <laughs> I don't know if it comes with the figures, probably not, but uh, it's it's the place that itself. You got Scrooge there, and then you got uh, Louie, Dewey, and Huey. And then we also have ah, what is her name? Ah, we didn't we didn't test ourselves on this. But doing you <laughs> we went on a Oh yeah, right there. Figures sold separately. Ah oh, damn, that's how they get you every time. We learned all three Huey, Dewey, and Louie because I was like, oh I have to learn. This is a cartoon fan, I have to know who's who. Hugh is Hugh Red. Blue is blue like dew, and then Louie is Lou like Luigi Green. That's how I remember it. It doesn't make sense, but just, yeah, it works, okay? I remembered them. And I found out how to know Chip and Dale apart. Was it their nose is red and black? Yep, we yeah. found that out. You didn't know that before. I did either. know that. Why, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell uh, me? I found out later. Yeah, that's what I said. You didn't but know it at the time. It wasn't from you. <laughs> <laughs> it was in the comments section. But Chip and Dale, Chip's n nose is like a chocolate chip. And then Dale's nose is the more round, like, you know, a classic cartoon or a clown nose. So that's how you know them too. Chip is the uh, chocolate chip. Are we still going to remember this? I will. I will genuinely remember. I remember this. You're going to look at him and be like, oh, yeah, this is Chip and this is Dale. <laughs> <laughs> but now we got to remember what her name is. I'll remember this and I'll remember Chip and Dale, which one's which, but I'll never remember that Blue's a girl. <laughs> I'll always call Blue a boy. It's got to be something purple related, right? I don't know. Maybe it's just a name. Yeah. Like like, Huey. No, like, like <laughs> Tiffany or Janet or Maggot. You would never guess that because it's not based on anything. Her name is Webby. No, I because she has webbed feet. Well, yeah, they all do. <laughs> they all could be named Webby. Oh, this is Billy because he's got a bill. Well, they all got bills, okay? My name must be just flesh because I'm made out of flesh. <laughs> like, that's what? Yeah, you're fleshy. <laughs> 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 she's Webby, uh, whatever. I actually knew that once I read the name, I was like, oh yeah, I can't remember from the old school show. She was in it named Webby as well. So <laughs> there you go. You have the DuckTales Great Bank. I mean, but that's a really cool like figure, you know? Has some shelf status. And honestly, if I had the space, I would start a Disney XD collection and this would be in it. That is cool. Is it worth anything? Who knows? But nonetheless, that's awesome. So we have that now. And then last but not least, we have Bob's Burgers Monopoly. Oh, wow. It is sealed. There is some damage to the wrap right here. Look at that. Who knows? Maybe they actually pulled the whole game out of there and yeah, played, it for a little, <laughs> played it for a little bit. And they just closed this back up like, oh, it's still sealed. You know, possibly. I feel like, didn't we have, last time we opened up one of these boxes, we got a Steven Universe Monopoly. It's like a tradition that we get a Monopoly each one. <laughs> so we have a Bob's Burgers Monopoly this time. Poor family guy. They used to be so big until Bob came around. And then they got kicked off of Cartoon Network. Yeah, they're still on Fox and still not doing as good as Bob. Bob is a... Uh, Bob's the new guy, and I like Bob. I love I love Bob's Burgers, honestly, but I still love Family Guy. But we'll check these guys out. That is actually it, though. The box is now empty. That was quite a freaking haul there, though. A lot of fun, different variety stuff. I can't wait to see what they find in the next box when we open up, but let's go ahead and check this stuff out real quick before we uh, total up everything. All right! We have reached our grand total, <laughs> and it is $635. So this freaking game, man, is like randomly stupid expensive. It goes for like 80 bucks, but- we're gonna... <laughs> It's almost like the sticker on there. <laughs> <laughs> almost, literally. We're gonna go ahead and just mark down at the end here, though. So this one for like 80 bucks. This game went for like 30. This one went for like 30. This one went for like nothing. And then this one, we couldn't find it. So we're gonna put nothing on this one, too. But let's just go ahead and take $35 off again, in case we went high on anything and still we made it to six hundred dollars in potential value so an amazing amazing haul such a fun haul of different items too of different categories of nostalgia in general not even just animation stay tuned i'm gonna add a couple of these guys in my collection especially that bobblehead scooby-doo i can't wait to so stay tuned for that if you guys haven't already hit the like button if you guys haven't already as well subscribe so you guys do not miss any of the videos we got coming up here on the show and if you guys 
guys want to support the show further, you can go check out the Patreon where you can sign up for only $2 a month and you get extended versions that are 100% ad free of every single video that we upload here on YouTube, as well as early releases and a bunch of perks like that. So go check it out again, only $2 a month when you sign up and it helps immensely on making this show possible. So I highly recommend you guys go take a look and then not just that, you can also follow us on Whatnot where you may be able to pick up many of these items that you see here today and every single cent that we make on Whatnot, I've talked about it before, is directly what we use as our budget in order to go ahead and do all the different hunting videos and pick up videos that you guys see here on this show. So all of it works in a nice little ecosystem that is, that is all supported by you incredible people. So thank you guys so much for supporting everything that we do, whether it be on Patreon or whatnot, and huge shout out to our Patreons as always. Stay tuned, like I said, but before that, you know the drill. Scan it! Okay, so for stuff being added to the collection, this one we're gonna be putting in our Nickelodeon files, but actually I think we have a stack of comic books that we've been adding up inside the house. I'll probably be adding this to that for right now until I can get a brand new bag and board for it because it has all bag, no board. This one right here, the sealed copy of the Rugrats movie. I don't know, we might already have this in the collection, but I'm gonna go ahead and take it to the expanded movie collection in the vault. This guy right here, we're gonna be putting with our Christmas decorations for come later this year when Nickmas comes around where we put our Nickelodeon Christmas tree up. We're gonna be having a bigger Nickmas tree this year. We're doing a lot of things bigger this year. So <laughs> you'll be up. Maybe you'll end up using this one. I don't know. It is brand new, but honestly, it's going to be in my collection inevitably. So I don't think I'll have a problem with just opening it up so we can put it on the tree. And for this one, it's, I'm going to be, be going my collection. And then this one right here, the stack that came out of it, like I said, I'm going to work on that project over a period of time. I'm not in a rush to figure it all out, but you know, I wanted to get some of the ones that were easy to get separated since we had it there separated. We don't have that many of these. So I'm going to go ahead and just put it right here. We have the Rugrats already in this little like perfectly four squared piece although it is vintage the, the it's more bag like, packaging than it is product you know so it doesn't look that good on display <laughs> true <laughs> so we're gonna put on our cork boarding here on the wall so you guys already know the disney stuff is going to be being moved soon here so i'm not going to spend too much time trying to get this placed in here but what i did with the gravity falls book is exactly what i'm going to do with this these freaking like slip covers get so damaged over time i'm just going to take the slip cover off of this book i put them in plastic and i just kind of put them in a little bin that has all these like slip covers for movies and books because inevitably they do like you can already see on this one they start to get like a little bit of these like lips right here and you start turning white so i'm just going to take it out of that and it's going to be going with the gravity falls book on display over there along with dipper's guide to mystery and non-stop fun by uh mabel <laughs> So on that note, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, smack the like button, subscribe if you're new here. Again, go check out our Patreon where you sign up. It's only two bucks a month. You get that extended version of everything else I talked about. And if you guys want to be a part of our What Not streams, we're there every single Friday. All you have to do is sign up and you get $15 for free to go pick up anything you want. And as well, we price all the items in this video, but everything that we do on What Not, we start them off at a price that's usually significantly lower to what they're usually going for. So you might be able to pick up some stuff for a great deal. And there's also many other sellers on whatnot as well too that you guys can take advantage of by using that $15. And I'll see you guys in this video right here that I know you're gonna love. But as always, Rep Pack, I will see you, beautiful people. Thank you again so much for just watching this video. And the next one, adios and bloop!